Hi, what I'd like to describe for you today is the Magnetomechanical Harmonic Oscillator, which is an instrument for undergraduate teaching. And what I like about this experiment is that it covers really basic physics. It covers the harmonic oscillator, uh, which is very central, of course, in physics. This is also very modern physics. Uh, if you look at uh, electronic devices, every cell phone, every computer has quartz crystal oscillators. and uh, uh, those oscillators are just mechanical oscillators, high Q oscillators, much like this one. And so the physics that we describe in this instrument is much like uh, uh, these high Q uh, uh, quartz crystal oscillators, which are being manufactured at a rate of about 2 billion a year. So this is a very relevant uh, experiment and very relevant physics for modern uh, technology. So if we look at this instrument, I think you'll find it's, uh, first of all, very versatile. It can do a lot of different experiments. Uh, it's also, it's, it's peppy. It's got, you can do these experiments quickly and it's sort of made to keep your attention as you look from one thing to another. Uh, it's pretty open. Uh, students can look inside and see uh, what's going on. So it's, uh, it, it sort of feels very intuitive. Uh, the look of it and the way the, the, uh, the input and output go is very intuitive. Uh, it's also a, a nice compact unit. It's rugged, rugged enough for some student abuse and yet affordable. And, uh, and finally, we tried to make it uh, into a nice package, something that looks like it belongs in a modern physics lab, in a 21st century lab. And I hope you decide it belongs in your lab. So, uh, so let's take a close look and, and see what it'll do. One nice feature of this instrument is that the hardware is all open and exposed, so students can really see uh, what's happening for themselves. So let's zoom in a little bit. And in the center right here, we have a test mass. It's in this plastic housing, which is supported by two steel wires, one above and one below. And the, uh, uh, it's a torsional oscillator, so this test mass uh, oscillates about that vertical axis defined by those wires. And the wires, the twisting of the wires, provides a restoring force. The test mass itself is made up of a magnet, a rare earth magnet here, half inch in diameter and three quarters of an inch long. Below that is a mirror right here. And there's another mirror just like it on the other side. To excite the oscillator, we use the drive coil over here. And that produces a magnetic field, which is perpendicular to the magnetic moment of the test mass, which is magnetized along its axis. So if we drive this coil at a frequency near the resonant frequency of the torsional oscillator, it'll excite the oscillation. So that frequency is around 40 hertz. To measure the amplitude, we use a laser out front here. The laser shines on the mirror and then off into the distance and uh, and then we can see the streak of the laser and measure the amplitude of the oscillation. So let's turn it on and see what that looks like. So there it starts to oscillate and now let's have a look at that laser streak. So here you see the laser streak uh, hitting a ruler. So the laser comes out here, hits that mirror and the beam hits the, the, the ruler, and it's a very nice way of measuring the amplitude of the oscillations. Someone just measures the length of that streak, and without any, any trouble at all, you can convert the, the length of that streak to the amplitude of the oscillations in radians. It's a very simple, very intuitive calibration, and a, and a pretty accurate signal. So well, some people have said, well, you can't see the actual oscillations. It's too fast, uh, so it's just a streak. But we can, we can fix that. Uh, we can strobe the laser. So now you see we're strobing the laser at about a hertz or a little over a hertz lower than, a little less than a hertz from the, uh, from the frequency of the oscillations. And so now you see the, the beam just going back and forth. And this is kind of fun too. The students can have a look at this. And of course you can change the strobe frequency and, uh, and make it double or triple or, or quadruple the, the oscillation frequency and see more, more streaks. Uh, but anyway, it gives one a, a picture of the oscillator going back and forth as oscillators do. Okay, so one experiment I like uh, with this is very simple. You just drive the oscillator with a signal generator at some frequency, some amplitude, and then you just change the frequency and watch what happens to the uh, oscillation amplitude. Now in the beginning, if you, if you tweak it, you see there's a, uh, some relaxation, there's a transient behavior. And then in a few seconds, it settles down to the, to the to steady state behavior. And part of the reason we picked the parameters for this oscillator is to make that, uh, that, that settling time quite short. So let's see that again. If we say set it on resonance, 
Okay, so we, this is close to the resonant frequency of the oscillator, so you get a big streak. And now let's just change it by a couple of hertz. And you see there's the beat frequency, that's two hertz. And it takes a little time to settle down, the transient behavior. And then finally, after about five, six, ten seconds, it's nicely settled. So we can go up and frequency as well. Okay, whoops, wrong way. Okay, and there it goes again. So again, you see the beating of the transient behavior. So one nice experiment, very simple, is you just take the, measure the length of that streak, and then slowly change the frequency of the laser. Okay, a little slower than I'm doing now, but you'll see it, it increases as we get close to resonance. Okay, and then finally it hits the resonance peak. And then as we go beyond, I'm not letting it settle down, of course, but and then as you go beyond the resonance, it uh, it's, uh, shows the usual behavior. So now you might think if you measure this on a, on a plastic ruler that you might not get really nice results, but you would be wrong because here is a plot of just such data. So what I did here is measure the, the length of that laser streak as a function of the frequency uh, used to drive the oscillator. And each of these points uh, falls very nicely on a Lorentzian curve. Uh, and it's a beautiful curve. The points are right on the line. The residuals are a few percent. And uh, that is consistent with being able to measure the, the length of that streak to about a millimeter. And if you look at the ruler carefully, it's fairly straightforward. The spot is, is fairly small, and you can measure that to about a millimeter uh, fairly easily. And so it gives this beautiful Lorentzian curve. So that's very nice. So that's a very nice experiment. Now you can do more. For example, you can now uh, let's tune this back to resonance and we can let that settle. Okay, now if we want to look at the decay of the oscillator, all we have to do is turn the drive signal off. Okay, and we'll make a video of this. So just much like the video you're looking at now, we we'll get the camera a little closer so we can see the, the scale on the ruler. And then set that up, start the video rolling, and then just turn the oscillator off. And there it goes. And you would expect that to be an exponential decay. And lo and behold, if you take some data, here you see a nice exponential decay. Here's uh, uh, the sweep amplitude again in, in log scale versus time. And the decay time is a little over two seconds. Okay, And this can be done just with a simple video uh, these data were actually taken using a smartphone. Smartphone was set up here, take the video, and then you go through the video step by step. And uh, again, the calibration is the same because you're actually measuring the length of the laser streak on the ruler. You're not trying to do it on the video itself. You're just using the, the fact that the streak is seen on a ruler. Okay. And uh, if you want to do the opposite experiment, you can start with zero amplitude and then just turn the drive on at resonance and then you would expect uh, one minus an exponential and so one can measure that using the same video. Okay, so quite a bit you can do just by looking at uh, uh, the length of that laser streak as you uh, play around with the oscillator. Now if you'd like to let the computer take data for you we can do that too. In the back here we have two photodiodes right here and here, a matched pair. And also, we have an LED back there which shines on the mirror, the opposite mirror from this one. And the light reflects off that mirror onto these photodiodes. And if the oscillator is sitting at zero uh, angle, then the light is right between the photodiodes. So we difference that signal and we get zero. And if the oscillator is twisted, then it will be either hitting preferentially one photodiode or the other. And when we difference the signal, we get a voltage which is proportional to the position angle of the torsional oscillator. So one can use that signal and measure the amplitude, uh, it's a sine wave, uh, measure the amplitude to uh, uh, feed that into the computer. You may have noticed also these two larger coils. They're used for changing the spring constant of the uh, torsional oscillator. If we apply a static current to those coils, then they produce a magnetic field which is along the axis of the magnet and that will increase or decrease the spring constant of the torsional oscillator depending on the sign of the current. Uh, we also have 
a, a piece of copper we can slide in and out and that provides eddy current damping as the oscillator moves uh, it generates currents inside that copper and the dissipation of those currents draws energy out of the oscillator providing damping so we can move that in and out and change the amount of damping in the oscillator so there you have it we have a, a torsional oscillator we can vary the spring constant using a static magnetic field we can vary the damping in the oscillator using eddy current damping we have another coil to drive the oscillator and we have two methods to measure the uh, amplitude of the oscillations. Now once you have a voltage that's proportional to the oscillator position angle then you can do a few, few more things. So what I have here on the scope is that the the red trace is the output from those two photodiodes so that gives you basically the position angle of the oscillator as a function of time and the yellow trace is what I'm driving the oscillator with that's the uh, uh, the signal generator output. Okay, and so right now I'm close to resonance and those two signals are 90 degrees out of phase And so if I go to lower frequencies Okay, now I'm triggering on the on the oscillator the signal generator output and the oscillator is is relaxing it takes a little bit of time and you see now that uh, the oscillator and the drive are nearly in phase which is what you expect when you're uh, driving the oscillator below resonance. So now I increase to above resonance. And of course it takes a while for the oscillator to respond again. And then you see when it finally relaxes, uh, then the two are out of phase. Okay, so again, you can see a nice phase relationship between the, the drive frequency, uh, the drive signal, and the oscillator response. So if I go back to on resonance, you expect uh, 90 degrees. I gotta turn this down a little because the amplitude is higher. And you can see it's close to 90 degrees. And uh, you can also switch from uh, YT mode to XY mode. So get a Lissajous figure. And this allows you to, uh, to measure again the, the, uh, the uh, resonance frequency of the oscillator by making that a, a nice oval. So if, if I tweak it, if I go too too high, it gets distorted in that direction. And if I go too low, it gets distorted in that direction. And so now if I get it just right, so that it's not distorted, which is right about there, maybe there. So that's 41.51 hertz. So you can measure that uh, frequency to plus or minus 10 millihertz, uh, which is pretty good. Okay, so that's about it for this video. Uh, there's some more videos on the website. Uh, so I hope you have a look and you can look at some of the other features of the oscillator. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, there's more on the website and uh, you're welcome to send us an email or give us a call and we, with any questions you have. Thanks for listening.